In the last video, we saw how the goat with a notable horn, Greece, overthrew the ram with two horns, Medo-Persia. The large horn found on the goat was broken and spoke of Alexander the Great, who died at the height of his power. Out of that horn came out four horns, which speaks of how the Grecian Empire was divided between four of his generals. Out of one of the four horns came out a little horn. That is, out of the four divisions of the Grecian Empire, which was divided among the four generals, came forth a little horn. Daniel chapter 8 verse 9 to 14 reads, And out of one of them came a little horn, which grew exceedingly great, towards the south, towards the east, and towards the glorious land. And it grew up to the host of heaven, and he cast down some of the host and some of the stars to the ground, and trampled them. He even exalted himself as high as the prince of the host, and by him the daily sacrifices were taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. Because of transgression, an army was given over to the horn to oppose the daily sacrifices, and he cast truth down to the ground. He did all this and prospered. Then I heard a holy one speaking, and another holy one said to that certain one who was speaking, How long will the vision be concerning the daily sacrifices and the transgression of desolation, the giving of both the sanctuary and the host to be trampled underfoot? And he said to me, for 2,300 days, then the sanctuary shall be cleansed. Before taking a closer look at the little horn, we will first need to understand certain terms. We will begin by looking at it in the natural, to the literal point of view which Daniel would immediately think about. What is the sanctuary? The sanctuary is the dwelling place of God. God primarily has two sanctuaries, the heavenly sanctuary, and the earthly sanctuary. To Daniel, it would point to the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem. This would be God's earthly sanctuary. What does the host mean? Relative to the sanctuary and the services, the host speaks of the priesthood of the tribe of Levi as ministers of God. The stars are the spiritual stars as the seed of Abraham, as spiritual leaders of the nation represented in Levi. The host and the stars are cast down to the ground and trampled upon. It speaks of their apostasy, which means to fall away from the faith. Who is the prince of the host? The prince of the host speaks of that as the first, and therefore refers to the high priest. The daily sacrifices. The daily sacrifices are the daily ministrations that the priests would offer in the temple as prescribed in the book of Exodus in relation to the tabernacle of Moses. The daily ministrations include the brazen altar, the brazen laver, the golden lampstand, and the altar of incense. What does the transgression of desolation mean? Transgression is to bypass the law. Sin is a transgression of the law. Transgression of God's law leads to desolation. Desolation means to be empty, barren, and to be void of God's presence. The removal of the daily sacrifices not only speaks of the defilement of the temple that led to desolation, but is also a result of the transgression and abominations of God's people. When the sanctuary is cast down, trodden underfoot, and the prince of the host and the daily sacrifices are taken away, there can only be one outcome, desolation. The cleansing of the sanctuary would mean a rebuilt and restored temple that must have a cleansing on the Day of Atonement where the high priest would make atonement for the nation of Israel and for the sanctuary. Only then could the sanctuary be clean for God to dwell there. Let us now uncover the mysteries of this little horn. History reveals that Antiochus Epiphanes, who came from the Seleucid Empire, more specifically Syria, took away the daily sacrifices and defiled the restored temple that was rebuilt under Ezra and Nehemiah. In order to eradicate the faith of Israel, Antiochus Epiphanes forbade the burnt offerings and sacrifices, profaned the Sabbath and festivals, defiled the sanctuary and the priests, and had swine and other unclean animals sacrificed.
He arrogantly entered the sanctuary and took the furniture and utensils of the temple into his own land. He shed much blood, tore to pieces, and burned the books of the law that were found and made a decree that those who would not adhere to his laws would be put to death. He caused many Jews to forsake their faith, to sacrifice to idols, and to profane the Sabbath. The cleansing of the sanctuary is seen under the Maccabees who rebelled and fought against Antiochus Epiphanes to regain control of Judea and reinstituted the services of the Mosaic laws. We see how Antiochus Epiphanes partially fulfilled the prophecy of the little horn, but it ultimately points to the final personal Antichrist. There is something that is higher more spiritual and heavenly when it comes to this vision. It goes beyond the natural to that which is spiritual. It moves from that which is earthly and temporal to that which is heavenly and eternal. The natural is a type and shadow and points to the spiritual. The first key to this is found in the time element. Verse 17 tells us that the angel Gabriel told Daniel, Understand, son of man, that the vision refers to the time of the end. Moreover, Gabriel said in verse 19, Look, I am making known to you what shall happen in the latter time of the indignation, for at the appointed time the end shall be. And again it says in verse 26, And the vision of the evenings and the mornings which was told is true. Therefore seal up the vision, for it refers to many days in the future. This vision, therefore, has to do with the time of the end, the latter time, and refers to many days in the future. These all speak of the last days in which we live in, but more specifically the last of the last days. These are the final days during the reign of the Antichrist before our present age comes to an end and Jesus returns. We will now seek to understand the vision spiritually. And out of them came a little horn, the Antichrist, which grew exceedingly great toward the south, towards the east, and towards the glorious land. And he grew up to the host of heaven, and he cast down some of the host and some of the stars to the ground and trampled them. The host speaks of the host of the redeemed who have a priestly ministry. The blood of Jesus has made us kings and priests unto God. We are a royal priesthood. The stars point to the spiritual leaders of the church. The host and the stars that are cast down to the ground and trampled upon speaks of a great apostasy spoken of by Paul in 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1. It says, Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrine of demons. He, that is the Antichrist, even exalted himself as high as the Prince of the Host. The Prince of the Host is our great High Priest, the Lord Jesus Christ. And by him, the Antichrist, the daily sacrifices were taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. The daily sacrifices are the daily ministrations of the saints. They have to do with number one, the daily sacrifice which has to do with cleansing ourselves through the blood of Jesus. Number two, the daily washing of the Word of God. Number three, the daily supply of the oil of the Holy Spirit. And number four, the daily incense, which is the daily prayer of the saints. The sanctuary here speaks of the church as God's earthly dwelling place. Because of transgression, an army was given over to the horn to oppose the daily sacrifices, and he cast truth down to the ground. He did all this and prospered. History has given us a glimpse of this little horn in the person of Antiochus Epiphanes. He defiled God's sanctuary by offering swine and unclean animals that which is forbidden by God for sacrifice. He also caused many of the Jews to depart from the faith. Antiochus Epiphanes is but a shadow of the Antichrist and reveals how the Antichrist will defile God's dwelling place, the church, take away the daily sacrifices and cause many to fall away from the faith. We must therefore keep ourselves in the Lord through the daily ministrations and go unto perfection. 
the church must keep herself holy and pure from the doctrines of demons and from all practices that are abominable before God that some churches allow today. We are to offer unto God a sacrifice that is holy, pleasing and acceptable in His sight.